start putting on growth early. Red tip photania, if you have the misfortune of having red tip photania in your yard, you listened to Steve George 20 years ago. I've always thought that the reason that Steve George had to leave town was because he promoted red tip photania and Chinese pistache, which have both turned out to be lousy plants for this area. So he moved up to Dallas where they didn't know him. But if you have photania in your yard and it's still alive and you still like it, it's one of the first plants to uh, to put on its growth. So you're probably going to have to prune it in the middle of January if you want to get ahead of the growth coming out. The timing is important because once again we don't want to prune too early and have a bunch of new growth come out and freeze back, but we do want to do the pruning before the new growth really gets started. Uh, because if you let this mm -hmm. pittosporum put on its big flush of spring growth and then cut it back, you've just used up, or the plant has used up a lot of its stored nutrient reserve to put on that spring foliage and now you're making it start all over again. So green shrubs like garburnums and pits and boxwood and things like that, we want to prune right about now so that we're late enough, we're not likely to have a hard freeze after the foliage starts coming out, but we're early enough that we've gotten it before it started putting on a lot of fresh spring growth. Yes? I have the dwarf pit of storm that got a little bit too big and I, I pruned it pretty heavily and because uh, it was growing up above the window. Uh -huh. Plus then the deer got a hold of it is, and it's not looking too very good right now. Is there a way that I can... There is a special way to prune overgrown shrubs that I'll, I'll cover in a few minutes. Right now you probably should just fertilize, give a little extra fertilizer and watch your watering very carefully. Okay. Yes. Pomegranate, is that spring or... Summer? Pomegranate tends to bloom on new growth. So if you need to prune your pomegranate, do it right now. Yes, ma'am. What about pomegranate? It kind of blooms all the time and it's sprawling. In my okay. Perennials that tend to be almost ever blooming, like plumbago, like salvia indigo spires, like most all of these things, typically will freeze back to some degree in the winter and then we just kind of cut off the dead wood and they come back out. When we have a winter that is as mild as this one has been, come on, there's some seats up around here. Um, years like this when the perennials that typically freeze back don't, then that uh, the, what comes into play is just uh, do I have to prune them and when do I prune them and how much. You really don't have to prune those perennials if you don't want to, but they're going to be a lot prettier if you do cut them back to some extent. Esperanza, which is a tropical perennial, most years freezes down to two or three feet high and then grows back to be ten feet tall before the end of the summer. This year it didn't really freeze back at all. So it's going to start out already 10 feet tall, and if you don't prune it, it's going to be 20 feet tall by the end of this summer, which is not bad if you have room for something that big and you like Esperanza. But on things like Plumbago or Esperanza or many of the salvias, um, you need if you want to cut them back, what you want to do is cut them back late enough that you're going to have, uh, that we're going to be past the danger of a real hard freeze before it puts on a bunch of new growth. I'm thinking that in Bernie, I'm probably not going to have another hard freeze after about another two or three weeks. So I pruned my plumbago last Thursday on my day off. So I'm going to tell you in San Antonio, I probably would be pruning back those perennials right now. Because it's probably going to take two weeks for them to really start leafing out. And hopefully in two weeks, uh, you know, we'll be past the danger of a hard freeze. But I would not have pruned the plumbago back two weeks ago because had I done so, it would already have lots of new growth, lots of new leaves, and we could easily get a you know a heavy frost sometime in the next short while, which would hurt it. Yes, ma'am. Vitex. Vitex is a woody shrub. It's going to bloom primarily on last year's wood. So let it bloom and then prune it afterwards. Yes, ma'am. Firebush. Firebush typically freezes to the ground. So yeah, it's just the same as the plumbago. How you can cut it. How, how low would Mother Nature usually prune it? All the way to the ground. So you prune it back to whatever point you want it to branch and come out. You can cut it all the way back if you want to. Yes, ma'am. Let me cover tropicals in just a couple of minutes. Yes, sir. How far back do you uh, prune Esperanza? This to the point you want it to branch. Now, most years, what I tell people in Esperanza as far as when to prune it, because Esperanza, everybody knows Esperanza, yellow bells, Tacoma stands, whatever you want to call it. 
Typically, when it drops all of its leaves in the winter, it's frozen back partially, but you really don't know how far back it's frozen until it starts to come out in the spring. And most years, you know, you've got growth that's this tall that all looks dead, and then all of a sudden it starts really coming out at this point. Well, everything above that point froze, so we cut it off just above where the new growth is coming out. This year, when it didn't freeze back, the choice is up to you, and the result will be how large it gets. So cut it back to the point that you want it to branch. Can you yes. put the main stalk on that? Sure. Yeah. Yes. Xylosma? Xylosma is a green shrub like Pittosporum. Now is the time to prune it. I'm going to come to how much to cut in just a second. Yes, ma'am. My Vitex still has all the oils Seed pods? Dye on it. Do I cut them off? You can trim them off if you think it makes it look nicer. I don't know if birds will eat that seed. I know I recommend leaving the old seed heads on crepe myrtles late in the year because the birds love the seed. But uh, the only reason to prune is cosmetic. Yes? Cherry laurel. I it's just now starting to get Cherry laurel is not usually grown for its flowers. So I would treat it like a pittosporum and prune it now. Yes? With the well established wisteria uh -huh. that uh, blooms out and goes back to dead wood. Yeah. How much should I take off the dead you should let it. You should let it bloom first because all of your flowers on wisteria are going to be on the old growth. And then it's just a matter of how much you want to limit the size as to how much you cut out. I've got quite a lot of the, I guess I call them lipids, the little vine that just go out there. And the more you leave, the bigger it'll be next year. So wisteria can actually be pruned into a tree. I've seen wisteria trunks like this big around that stand this tall and then just do this. But you're pretty, in the case of wisteria, you're pruning only to limit the size and the shape. <clears throat> if you got room for it to grow, it'll cover the, you know, 100 foot fence. But if you planted it on a little trellis that's this big, you got problems. It's going to outdo that. And wisteria is one of those things that I'll rarely recommend putting on a wooden structure of any sort because that vine is so strong, it will take the wood apart. Okay. If you're going to put it on a wooden structure, See those big old lag bolts? That's eight inch lag screws that we put in here to make this building strong. You better put your wooden trellis together with something like that or the wisteria will undo it for you. <laughs> yes, I think your neighbors, I presume, not your, but your neighbors. I on my patio. You can move it, but do it real soon. The idea with transplanting, which is a whole other topic, but you want to do it early enough in the year that it's gotten its root system reestablished before it gets hot. I typically say if you're going to move shrubs or woody plants, do it between November, between Thanksgiving and Valentine's Day. Okay, one more. Yes. If you do transplant, should you prune before or after roses particularly? You'll get fewer thorns if you prune before. <laughs> but it, <can't. laughs> it doesn't really make a lot of difference. The problem is if you're moving roses earlier, and you cut them back, you're going to stimulate that new growth, whether you're moving or whether you're leaving them in place. And I don't want to see a lot of new growth coming out the middle of January when it may freeze back. So typically, it depends on when you prune it. Okay, uh, the third group of plants, we said things that flower in the spring, prune after they bloom. Things that flower in the summer or are grown strictly for green foliage, prune them early in the spring. <laughs> Third group of plants are the plants that produce berries, like pyracantha and hollies and things like that. And same thing really goes for citrus trees. And you're kind of at a, you know, it's kind of a catch-22. If you prune them before they bloom, you're cutting off the wood that would have flowers and therefore have berries. If you prune them after they bloom, they're already starting to make berries, so you're cutting off the berries before they can develop. So the answer is there's never a really good time to prune hollies or pyracantha or things like that. But the time that I like to prune them is while they are in bloom. The reason for that is that invariably, it seems like if you look at a big pyracantha, some limbs are absolutely covered with flowers and therefore will have a ton of berries. Some limbs have very few flowers on them. And you don't really know which is which until the flowers have opened. So if you prune while they're in bloom, you can take out some of the limbs that have the fewest flowers, leave the limbs that have the most flowers, and that way you're not really destroying your berry crop. If you've got satsumas or limes or Myers lemons or things like that, again, you don't have to prune them at all. But if you want to reduce the size of the tree or whatever, 
then uh, prune them while they're in flower, take off the limbs with the fewest flowers, leave the limbs with the most flowers, and that way you really haven't destroyed your developing fruit crop. So, in deciding when to bloom, you've got those three categories of plants, and that will tell you pretty much when you should be doing the flowering. Now, first of all, what to cut with and how much to cut off. This type of